Hello everybody, CVH here, and in today's video we're going to be continuing on with our Return to Clockwork City set review for Elder Scrolls Legends with the Endurance cards of the expansion, talking about all eight of them, the pros, the cons, where I think they might see play, and just my general opinions overall. Starting with Thornwell Terror. So, we have another Werewolf card. This is a 1 Magic, a 1-3, which in beast form transforms into the plus 1, plus 1 version of itself, the Werewolf. Uh, all of these beast forms are procced when an enemy rune is destroyed, as you can see on the card. So a very aggressive archetype there. First and foremost, I'm really happy to see a little bit more Werewolf support in this expansion, even if it's really just this one card. Werewolves were a cool archetype introduced in Heroes of Skyrim that just really don't have enough cards to be a tier 1 or tier 2 deck in my opinion. Perfectly reasonable budget deck though, and this is a one cost creature that fits in perfectly with the deck, so if you're playing a werewolf deck, this just slots right on in there, definitely recommend it. And I like it in general as a one cost, I think it's a decent middle of the road option, I'm not sure if this is good enough to see play in any other non-werewolf centric decks, but I do like the card, I wouldn't be surprised to see some versions of maybe mid-range sorcerer or spell sword use it, but there are more and more one drops nowadays, so I'm not totally sure, but in werewolves, I like this card quite a bit. I don't think this is just enough to put werewolves all of a sudden on the map, all of a sudden better than orc warriors say, but with more support cards like this released in future expansions, I expect the archetype in general will see a lot more play. Second up today, we have Barrow Stalker, the 2 Magicka 2-3 with Drain and Guard. I mentioned in the first impressions video that this has a lot of similarities to Kavat Soldier. In fact, it is just a little bit strictly better because it does have Drain in addition to Guard, even though Kavat Soldier does have some synergy based on its, uh, its race there, and a vampire actually dies to Dawnbreaker. So that's a potential downside for Barrow Stalker. So not strictly better against an opponent playing Dawnbreaker, but most of the time, this is just going to be a Kavat Soldier that also has Drain. Now, that sounds pretty good. Kvat Soldier doesn't actually see a ton of play in Constructed, though, with so many powerful 2 Magicka creatures. We discussed some of that being a problem for the 2 Magicka creatures released in Agility in that last part of the set review. Barrow Stalker, though, I've already started to see people experimenting with this, and I think the results have been pretty positive. Will it stick around in Constructed and high-tier decks? Only time will tell, but so far I've liked this card in a variety of decks, from slower spell sword decks to more aggressive mid rangey decks, and it's just a pretty good card in general. Some people say the Drain and the Guard sort of fight each other, because if something has Guard, it gets attacked immediately, and then doesn't live to actually get any Drain damage in there, but I like it as a Drain that you can use even if you don't need a guard against something. The guard is obviously great early against aggro decks, but a chump guard later in the game when you already have both lanes guard and you're just looking to heal back into the game, this is where Barrow Stalker's utility can come into play because you're getting both with one card, even though, depending on the situation, you probably just need one keyword or the other. I like the card in general, and I think it'll probably see a good bit of play. Third up today, we have Weakness, a 2 Magicka action, which sets a creature's health to 1. So, much like the name, I actually think the power level of this card is a little weak. A lot of people are more excited about it than I am, but there's just so much good removal already in Legends that I don't know where this would actually fit in that doesn't have access to better cards. Maybe if you're using it to activate some Slay abilities very easily, but I don't know if that's actually too reliable, and we got Grappling Hook, which we talked about in the Strength part of this review, which can help those decks a lot. I don't know, I've tried to build a little bit of Control Warrior post-expansion, I just don't have room for weakness. I don't think it's that great. One cute little combo worth mentioning, though, is if you have a sheer point dragon on the board, like lay down arms, weakness does technically reduce the health of whatever creature you're targeting. So you can use this with sheer point dragon on the board to set something's health to one. Sheer point reduces it by an additional one. It just outright kills whatever creature you're going to be targeting there. So you can use it as a two magic to kill anything with sheer point. That hasn't been enough to save lay down arms. I know that card costs twice as much and also reduces the attack. I don't know if it'll be enough to make weakness good, because outside of that, I don't think scouts are looking for this kind of card, but that is something you guys should know is possible. However, in Arena, I think this card is fantastic, just a 2 Magicka action that can easily help you remove some large threat like a Swamp Leviathan. There are a lot of threatening creatures mid to late game in Arena that people take, and not a whole lot of removal that can really deal with them effectively, and weakness just adds to that. Fourth up today is Brasilisk, one of my favorite designs in the Return to Clockwork City expansion. 3 Magicka 2-2, when it takes damage and survives, summon a copy of it in the other lane. Important to note here that the copy that you're summoning does not retain any buffs on Brasilisk. So for example, uh, if this were buffed by Galen the Shelterer, which we'll talk about next, and you shuffled 5-5s five fives into your deck, you play one of those 5-5s, five fives, rapid shot it to get another Brasilisk, that one's going to come out as a 2-2. Two -two. Otherwise, it might be a little too good. And unfortunately, the stats in this card are also not very conducive to the effect. 
oftentimes it's hard to really make a ton of brass lisks, and sometimes the fact that you're getting the other brass lisk in the other lane can also be a problem as well. I would like to tell you that I have high hopes for this card because potentially the combos are really sweet, but I just don't think we have A, the health on this card to really make those combos reliable, or the number of cards that could combo with them. In, uh, in Hearthstone there were a lot more cards and a smaller deck count which really helped Patron Warrior out, and I did experiment with this deck as one of the first things post-expansion, and I have to say the results weren't too great, so unfortunately I'm going to have to relegate Brasilisk to meme tier. Whatever meme tier is, probably just an average rated card. The fact is that you just have to dedicate your deck slots to a really gimmicky combo that by itself isn't even really going to win the game and is directly weak to a lot of removal like Ice Storm. So unfortunately, I don't see Brasilisk seeing too much play. Very sad to say it though. Moving on, we have the unique Legendary and Endurance for Return to Clockwork City, the 3 Magicka 3-3, three, three, Galen the Shelterer with Summon, Choose a Creature or Item in your hand, shuffle 3 copies of it with plus 3 plus 3 into your deck. Immediately my mind went to two places, the Brass Lusk, which I've tried, it's cute when it happens, not enough to save the card in my opinion, and also Item Sorcerer because you can shuffle in combo cards like Master of Arms, Guard, Nerf Swords, and virtually any item in the deck. Buffing it up and adding more copies into your deck is, is pretty good for that kind of style of deck. However, Gale in the Shelter, a lot of people thought immediately that it would be sort of a staple in any sort of endurance deck whatsoever. I'm not so sure that I see that because a lot of the curve out sorcerer decks or spell sword decks, just the mid rangey decks, this effect could be really good if you just draw the whatever you shuffle in immediately, but a 3 cost 3-3 three, three isn't as good as Young Mammoth or Haunting Spirit or cards like that, so I'm not so sure if it'll see play in those styles of decks. But even in Ram Scouter, Control Spell Sword, this card has started to see play and been really powerful because you can shuffle in late game unique legendaries like Parthenax, Odaving, Maroc, or even just high value cards like Manticore, and all of a sudden you effectively have well either four times as many if you're shuffling any unique or just double if you're shuffling in a card like Manticora. That can be incredibly, incredibly powerful moving into the very late stages of the game in much the same way that Journey to Sovngarde is very powerful in the late stages of the game Game, except Galen can actually affect the game a bit earlier because you have to hold the journey until you have a critical mass of creatures in your discard pile and you can control what you're going to be targeting with Galen as long as that card is already in your hand already. So we're still experimenting with lists, obviously we don't know exactly where this will fit in over the course of after people have tested with different decks and seen if it was really worth it. My inclination is to think that it will be good in many slow endurance decks, probably not played many of the mid range or aggro ones, but could be very powerful in the late game. Mistvale Warden is next. The 3 Magicka 2-4 with Treasure Hunt Guard give the guard plus 1 plus 2. So the first time you draw a guard with Mistvale Warden on the board, you'll be getting a slight buff on that guard. I haven't seen a whole lot of people talk about this card too much, but it's actually been one of the more powerful cards I've experimented with so far. Already after the expansion's release, Inez hit number 1 Legend uh, from around number 3, I think, with a guard-oriented control spell sword deck. And this card was played as a 3 of in that deck. Uh, there are some powerful guards this set gave us, like Barrow Stalker, which we talked about today, and Phalanx Exemplar from the Willpower set review. But uh, this card, even buffing, let's say you buff a Hive Defender that you draw immediately after playing the Mist Veil Warden. And that's kind of the perfect situation because Hive Defender comes right after Mist Veil on the curve, but all of a sudden you have a 4 8 Hive Defender. That's crazy. Mist Veil Warden is a 2 4, which adds 1 2. That's essentially a 3 6 of value from this 3 cost card. A little bit inconsistent because you then have to draw a guard with this on the board, and it only happens once. But this is a card an aggro opponent can't really just ignore because that kind of effect is so powerful against them. So while they may not want or even be able to deal with the Mist Veil Warden because they would rather just hit you in the face, they know the guard that you'll be drawing next will just be that much more insurmountable if you're able to get one with Mist Veil Warden and they don't deal with it. So I like this card. I think it puts an interesting amount of pressure on aggro decks. We'll see how many guard-oriented builds uh, can actually play it because a lot of the control decks that exist that I don't think can play, I don't think have played enough guards to really take advantage of this. But this is one of the styles or subtypes of decks that I think this expansion and Mist Veil Warden could breathe new life into. So we'll see how much play they see. But if any guard or into deck comes along, I expect Mist Veil Warden to be a three of in it. Next we have Hollow Death Priest, the Mummify on a Stick, 5 cost 3-5 with Summon Transform, the highest cost creature into your opponent's hand into a Shriveled Mummy. You also get to see which card you transform. That doesn't say it on the card, but it is a bit of information that you then know to not be able, or that you won't have to play around, say, your opponent's Parthenax if you're just that lucky to play this when they have that on, in their hand. 
I don't hate this card as much as I think I initially did in the first impressions video. I've seen people experiment with it, and it can be pretty powerful. The information it gives you is one of the most powerful things about it. Just knowing for the long game that you don't have to play around a red Brahmin or whatever it might be. And even if your opponent doesn't have one of those amazing gets in their hand, like a Parthenax or a Red Brahmin, you'll still be able to get maybe a, a high-value guard, uh, just a card advantage generator like Eclipse Baroness. Most decks right now, at least, even the more aggressive ones, cap out at something a little bit threatening. For example, if you're up against Orc Warrior, you can remove a Wood Orc Headhunter or a Sow of Revenge. That's not that bad, you know? I compared this card a lot to Mummify in the first Impressions video, and for good reason. This card is really just like a Mummify, but preemptive, so it negates the summon ability ability, and of course, whatever damage it would deal immediately, so like a charge thing like that, or Ulfric's house card that they might be preparing to play and draw a bunch of cards immediately. Mummify is not going to answer that because it's just a bit too slow. This card is a little bit slow against aggro still, but it does have some added utility against a lot of those cards that Mummify lacks. The only problem, again, is that you can never be too sure before you play it what you're going to get. So we'll see if this card actually sticks around in those slower endurance decks that might want to play it. So far, I think it's a little bit better than I gave it credit for. I'm going to give it like a, a B. A B rating seems reasonable. And the last card today is one of my favorites, Hulking Fabricant, 5 cost, 5, 5, with summon. If you have a neutral card in play, gain plus 3, plus 3. So this is the card that cares about neutral creatures from this attribute. We've talked about the other four already in the last four parts of the set review. Feel free to check those out. And this, is, I think, probably is the most powerful. Just a 5 cost, 8, 8. Really, it's as simple as that. And that's incredibly obnoxious if you're trying to pressure your opponent, especially if you can ring it out on turn 4. Through experimentation, if you're going to play a neutral-oriented deck, dipping into another color for the Fabricant, I think Hulking Fabricant is probably where you want to be. It's also interesting to note, this is the most expensive Endurance card they gave us in this expansion, so clearly they're like, okay, Ram Scout's good enough, you guys can have some early to mid-game tools, and this is definitely not a Ram Scout card. This is a pressuring tool, a pressuring option, uh, and people are still experimenting with the neutral package in a variety of different mid-range decks, many of which are using Endurance just for this card. I think it's incredibly powerful. We'll just have to see if those neutral oriented mid rangey and aggressive decks make it as a stable part of the meta, but I have to imagine with this card to curve into on turn 4 or 5, they probably will. This is a very powerful card, uh, which you just have to play against a turn 4 or turn 5 8 8 to really understand how pressuring that is, but it's definitely a lot. But as always, these are just my opinions, so feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you think about any of the cards in Endurance that we've talked about today. Uh, and as always, if you've enjoyed the review, feel free to leave a like and stay subscribed for more Legends videos. Follow my stream in the description and stay tuned for the final part of the set review, the neutral cards, and feel free to check out all the four parts we've done before now on the channel. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.